All right, thanks for watching. And today I would like to, to solve a very classical calculus problem, one that was on my exam when I TA'd for calculus. So it's very neat, not quite obvious, but here's the problem. So a cone-shaped drinking cup is made from a circular piece of paper of radius r by cutting out one little sector and then joining those two edges. C A and C B. And the question is, let's find the maximal capacity of such a cup. And the idea is, you have, let's say, a piece of paper where you cut out a little triangle and you try to join the edges. And that should give you some sort of a paper cup. Something like that. I know it's awkward, but the point is, this cup, it could be very fine, like very, sorry, very acute, okay. in which case the, the cup, well, it's very high, but the radius is small, so maybe the volume isn't that big, or it could be very obtuse, where it's like a big cup with like a, a big radius, but the height isn't very big. So there is this interplay between the height and the radius, and the question is, you know, which one is optimal? So it's a classic optimization problem. And it turns out there's not much geometry required, fortunately. What you would like to do is find some identity that relates the base radius with the height. So suppose we take this cup and we turn it into a paper cup, then it looks something like that. Where the height here, we call it little h, and the base radius is little r. And the question is, what is this thing? Well, notice it's precisely this length r. It's just the slanted height of this. And this is r. And we'll use this in a second. But remember, for optimization problems, it's always the same thing. Draw a nice picture. Second, find some function to optimize. And what we want to do, we want to find a maximal volume of this. So in particular, let's find the volume of this cone. Well, the volume of the cone is just pi over 3, so 1 third pi r squared h. So interestingly, it's basically 1 third of the volume of the cylinder with radius r and height h. The only problem is, well, this involves two variables. You could optimize in two variables, but that's like for multivariable calculus. But what we want to do is somehow reduce it to a single variable calculus problem. And for this, we want to use this fact that little r and little h are related to big R. So let's do a profile picture or like a profile view of your function. That's r, h capital R, well, it's a right triangle, so we can apply the Pythagorean theorem, but R squared plus H squared equals to big R squared. And what's important is big R squared is constant. So it doesn't depend on anything. And while you have two choices, you could solve for H in terms of R, but that's a big problem because then you have square roots. Right? You could do that. You might be a bit, you know, it's a bit of a sadist or something if you do that, but don't hurt yourself. Instead, let's cast, solve for r squared. So r squared is big R squared minus h squared. And so this volume becomes pi over 3, big R squared minus little h squared times h and the good thing is, now we have a legit function. So our function becomes pi over 3 big R squared h minus pi over 3 h cubed. Pi over 3 big R squared h minus pi over 3 h cubed. And so in this case, f of h becomes pi over 3 r squared h minus pi over 3 
HQ. And the question is, well, what are the bounds here? Essentially, look again at this picture. We have little r, we have big r, and we have h. Well, of course, h well, has to be a positive constant. Heights are positive. And moreover, look, this is a triangle. This leg can never be bigger than the hypotenuse. So if H is bigger than capital R, we have a problem, because then it wouldn't be that right triangle anymore. So in particular, H is between zero and R. And we'll need that to check, you know, a maximum in. Okay, so we have our function. The next thing is, well, let's find the maximum. So we have to calculate the first derivative. So F prime of H becomes Again, this is a constant, pi over 3 r, q, r squared, derivative of h is 1, and here, minus pi over 3, 3 h squared, and which becomes pi over 3 r squared minus pi h squared. And you want to find a critical point, so you let that be equal to 0, and we get pi over 3 r squared equals to pi h squared. The pi's cancel out, and you get h squared is r squared over 3. In particular, since h is positive, h is r over square root of 3. Now it's possible, so we found a critical point, it's possible that this is, you know, actually a minimum, or even a saddle or something. So we have to check also the second derivative, which is not too bad. Because look, the second derivative here is f double prime of h. This is zero, because it's a constant, and you get minus pi, over 2h, which is minus 2 pi h. In particular, at this point, f double prime is negative. In fact, it's always negative. So f double prime of r over square root of 3 is minus 2 pi r over square root of 3, which is negative. So in particular, this point, r over square root of 3, at least locally, it's a minimizer. So uh, h equals to r, sorry, maximizer, is a maximizer. So a point where it has a maximum. Because the function, essentially, it looks concave down here. So at r over square root of 3, it's a maximizer. Now, it, it, Solves the problem, except we just need to check the endpoints, but the endpoints aren't that bad. Endpoints, well, f of 0 is pi over 3 r squared 0 minus pi over 3 0 cubed which is zero, and zero is not a max. Because for all the other values, it's positive. So there's no way it could be the biggest value. And also f of h is pi over 3 r squared h. Sorry, uh, sorry, not f of h, f of the other point. So f of capital R. So it's pi pi over 3 r squared r minus pi over 3 r squared, r cubed, sorry, and that becomes pi over 3 r cubed minus pi over 3 r cubed, which is also 0. So it's also not an x. Which essentially means the function looks like that. It's 0 here, it's 0 here, and it has a local maximizer at r over square root of 3. And therefore, at this point, we indeed have a max. So it becomes an absolute maximum. So, conclusion. Conclusion 
so h equals to r over square root of 3 is an absolute maximizer. Uh, but careful, that's not the question. The question asks you about the maximum value. So you just have to plug it into f. So, and then the answer just becomes f of r over square root of 3, which becomes pi over 3, r squared, r over square root of 3 minus pi over 3, uh, r over square root of 3. And that just becomes pi r cubed over 3 square root of 3 minus pi r cubed over 3. I almost wanted to say square root of 3, but square root of 3 cubed, it becomes square root of 3 times square root of 3 times square root of 3, which is 3 square root of 3. So 3 times 3 square root of 3. I'll be back. One second. And I'm back. Uh, so this then just becomes, notice that this factor basically factors out pi r cubed over 3 square root of 3 times 1 minus 1 third, and that becomes pi r cubed over 3 square root of 3 times 2 thirds, and that becomes 2 pi r cubed over 9 square root of 3. Which you can write without the square root of 3 on the bottom, but I think it's okay. I heard like the reason people don't like squares at the bottom, so uh, first of all, it simplifies some formulas, so that's okay. But also because before calculators, they had trouble calculating 1 over square root of 2 or something. But it turns out for some reason, again in the olden times, you know, like 30 years ago or something, it's easier to calculate square root of 2 over 2 because you have square root of 2 and you just divide it by 2. Whereas calculators, you have trouble dividing 1 by an irrational number. So honestly, at, you know, at this day and age, it doesn't matter which one you put. Well, sometimes it does because it simplifies stuff. But that's why it's a still a good answer. Okay, so it turns out that for some reason, the maximum capacity of the cup is that. And it's attained at h equals to square root of r over square root of 3. And also r becomes just something like square root of 2 thirds r. So not a quite nice answer but still pretty cool and very non-intuitive uh, all right so if you like this little calculus extravaganza and you want to see more math please make sure to subscribe to my channel thank you very much